Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 10 of my Java algorithms tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about Java hash tables. And more specifically, I'm going to spend a lot of time on hash functions and how they work. I'm going to present them in numerous different ways and show you numerous different code examples to make sure you 100% understand this. So let's get into it. So what exactly is a hash table? A hash table is just a data structure like anything else. And in this tutorial, it's probably better to think of it as an array, because I'm going to go through this really slowly and completely build up from the base. What it does is it offers very fast both insertion as well as searching. However, they're limited in size because of, like I said before, it's based off of an array. It can, however, be resized, but of course that is to be avoided, and they are very hard to order. So how do hash tables and hash functions work together. Well, key values are going to be assigned to elements in a hash table, just think array, using a hash function. And what a hash function helps you do is calculate the best index an item should go in. Now, of course, the index must be small enough so that it stays within the constraints of the array size, but also it can't overwrite other data in the hash table. A hash function's basic job is to store values in an array with a limited size. And it does it in a way that the array doesn't need to be searched through whenever the user decides to go and try to find that information in the hash table. So this allows you to enter values in any order and be able to find them using a calculation instead of searching through the array. And that is why they are very fast. So basically, if you have your little guy here and he wants information that was stored in a hash table, and he has a very specific non-duplicate ID for that information. That ID is going to go through a calculation, and that calculation is going to provide the exact index for that information. Then it goes directly to that location in the array or the hash table and sends the information back to the user. That is, in essence, what a hash function and how a hash table functions. So let's go and look at some code. And of course, all of the code in this video is available in a link underneath the video. So, and of course, it's free. And you should get it because it is very heavily commented. All right, so we're going to create our array because that's, in essence, what we're dealing with here. Also going to monitor array size. And even though I don't think I'm going to use it in this part of the tutorial, I'm also going to store the items in our array. Then I'm going to create my constructor for this, and I just called this hash function because that's really what we're going to be focusing on, and it's going to receive a size for our array. And then we are going to store that array size, of course, and we are also going to create our array with that specific size. And I'm going to show you two different hash functions in this tutorial, and I'm going to store negative one in every single one of the indexes in this array to start out so that we'll be able to see which parts are empty. And of course you wouldn't do this in the real world, but I just did this so I can display array index information whenever I execute these functions. And you can see down here, display the stack. That is some code I wrote that's just going to help us learn exactly what's going on with hash tables. And we're going to look at both how to insert items into a hash table as well as how to find them. Now to start this guy off, I'm going to start with a very simple hash function, and it is a hash function even though it's a bad one. And what it's going to do is put values in the same index that match their value. So if the value is 1, it's going to store it in index 1. And then I'm going to show you a little bit more fancy one. And this guy is going to receive a string, and this is going to be a string of numbers that are going to be stored in the array. And this is a hash function right here. And then what we're going to do is go int n is equal to 0 and less than strings for array. It's just an array that's going to have a whole bunch of values that you want inserted into your regular array. Here I'm going to go string new element value. And here I'm going to take the information that is stored inside of the array that's passed over. Let me move that up a little bit. And then array, all I'm doing here is taking whatever is stored in the array value wise and I'm storing it in that index. So this very specifically is the hash function part of this function. Now of course we're not going to be able to have any duplicates here. And now let's go up here into main and then start executing some things. I'm just going to call this the func and we're going to create a array with 30 empty spaces in it. And then we're going to create a string array 
that's going to be the elements to add to our main array, this guy right here. And of course in this situation, it's going to have to be limited to 0 up to 30 in regards to the values that are entering. Actually, it's going to have to be limited to 29. So I'm just going to take some junk values, throw them in there. And remember, no duplicates. Then we're going to say the func as function 1. And inside of this, we're going to pass elements to add. And I'm also going to pass along the function itself with the array. And then after we got all that done, the func and I want to display, I have this called display the stack, but it should be called display the hash table, and execute. And as you can see, all of the values were inserted in exactly the same index as the values themselves. So very simple, but this is a hash table. This is exactly what a hash table does. The only difference is the complexity of the calculation. That is it. That is a hash table. We just made a hash table, just not a particularly wonderful one. So now for our second example, let's say we're going to make a more complicated hash table. And I'm actually just going to copy this right here. I'm going to call this hash function 2. Now let's say we have to hold values between 0 and 999. But we never plan to have more than 15 values total stored in any array. Now it wouldn't make sense to make a 1,000 item array just to be able to use our previous hash function. So what exactly are our other options? Well, one way that we can fit these numbers into a 30 item array is to use the mod function. And all you're going to need to do is take the modulus of the value, whatever value we have here, 0 through 999, and take the modulus of that value versus the array size to make sure that it fits in one of the indexes in our array. And in judging on the size that our hash table or our, or our array needs to be, the goal is to make the array big enough to avoid collisions, which you're going to see what that is in a second, but not so big that we waste memory. So what this guy's going to do, it's going to also have a for loop inside of it, and we're going to do something very similar. Strings for array, length, we're going to cycle through the array that's passed over, of course, at that lowercase, and we're going to keep inserting them as long as we have additional values to insert. And I'm going to show you what collisions mean here in a second. It just means you're trying to throw something into an index that already has something. That's all collision is. If that doesn't make sense, though, I'm going to show you exactly what it is. And again, we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to extract the actual value from the array that's passed over in this situation. Then we need to create an index to store the value in by taking its modulus. Array index. And modulus is just going to guarantee for us that it's not going to be bigger than 30. We go parse int, go new, element, value, and modulus, 29. And then let's say that I want to print out some information here on exactly what's going on. So the modulus index is equal to array index for value. We're going to be able to watch this information get sent into this because it's a little bit more complicated. And then I want to cycle through the array until we find an empty space. And how I'm going to do that is go while the array, array index, is not equal to negative 1. Remember, when I create this array, I put negative 1 in every single one of these guys. Again, that's just there to help me be able to display things. Well, then I want to increment to the next index in the array. And what this means is a collision occurred, which means that we tried to put information in an index in the array that already has information in it. We're just going to print that out. And then, of course, if we get to the end of our array, we want to cycle back to the zero index. And, of course, this goes outside of that area. And then, if we get down here, we know that we found an index where we can store our value. So we do so. Now let's go back up into main and execute this guy. Okay, so these are going to be the elements that I'm going to add into it. And you can see there's exactly 30 items so that we can guarantee there'll be collisions. And then what I'm going to do is pretty much the same thing. I'm just going to execute it on our new function. Set that to 2 and then set this to elements to add to. I'll save and execute. And you can see right there, all of our items are inserted into our hash table. And you can see collisions. So after the modulus calculation, the value for 100 was inserted in index 13. 510 over here was inserted in index 17, so forth and so on. So let's say we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11 values were inserted before we had a collision. Right here, we had a collision because 
235 was already inserted in index 3. That's what a collision is. So what are we going to do? We're going to try 4 instead. Well, as you can see, there is no 4, so it has no problem going into index 4. And if we have 699, come down here into the, our actual array, you can see it is in index 4. And that is precisely what it does. And this is also why you want to make sure that your arrays are at least twice as large as the number of values you ever want to put into them. Because you can see how many collisions are going on right here. Pretty messy. So now that you know how to insert information into a hash table, let's go through how to find information in a hash table. Okay, so let's go right down here after function two, and this is gonna be public, and it's gonna return a string, and I'm gonna call this find key. It's gonna receive a string key that it's gonna be searching for, and it's gonna be searching in the hash table that we just created there. So what we wanna do here, first off, is find the key's original hash key. And how we're going to do that, I'm going to call this guy array index. And this is the calculation that's going to help you go directly to the index where the information was stored instead of messing around. We're going to go parse int and we're going to enter the key, which is like an ID, modulus 29, which is exactly what we did up here. Say modulus 29. So this is going to allow us to go directly to the first place they tried to put the information. Then what I'm gonna do is start cycling through this and look for a match. So I'm gonna go the array, array, index, hash. While this is not equal to negative one, which means it's empty, then I'm gonna say if the array index is equal to the key, the unique key that all these are gonna have, well, this means that I found the key. So I'm gonna print out some information here. And I'm gonna say was found in index, array, index, hash, right like that and I'm also going to return the array, the value itself. Now, if it didn't match, I just wanna look in the next index. Array, index, hash, and increment it, because that's exactly how I put the information in. And if we get to the end of the array, I wanna make sure that I go back to zero, and that is just done like this with the array size. Otherwise, if we get down here, we're gonna return null, and that just means we couldn't find it. So now, Go up here and see how exactly this is gonna work. Go right after this where we inserted our values and let's say that we want to find 660 inside of this. Just go like this and then I'm gonna go find key right like that and just type in 660 and execute. And you can see 660 was found in index 26. And if we come down here to index 26, you can see 660. So there is a basic introduction to hash tables and hash functions. In the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover even more complex examples on hash tables and hash functions. Please leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.